Hello there everybody, it is me Feaser Bunny and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So today we're actually building sort of like an unconventional home. It's actually a church conversion. Uh, so this is a house that originally used to be a church um, but was recently renovated into a one bedroom, one bathroom home. Um, slash workshop for an artist um, but yeah this build was originally intended to be sort of like a spooky Halloween special of sorts however I think it might be a little bit too late for that yeah apologies for my extended absence you guys I had to attend a cousin's wedding and I just got back I was originally supposed to stay for a weekend uh, but I ended up staying an entire week over at my mom and dad's place. Yeah, any excuse to spend more time with my parents is a valid one in my own opinion. Uh, but yeah, sadly, um, simming and just YouTube kind of has to take a back seat to some of these more significant real life events so yeah hopefully you guys understand and the good thing is that it looks like november is going to be a very very eventful month for the game uh starting with the release of the brand new patch which is actually a huge huge update to the game it's gonna bring terrain tools as well as first person gameplay which just oh my gosh it's everything i've ever asked for i never thought i would ever get that in the sims 4 and that's coming out in a couple of days from when i'm doing this recording when this video comes out it would probably be on the day of the update itself if you guys are watching it on the day this video comes up also later this week we're gonna be getting get famous which i'm so excited i haven't really been keeping up on social media uh, simply because i wanted to be present you know for my cousin like the cousin that i was talking about the one that got mar married she's practically like a sister to me so literally growing up we were neighbors um i cannot believe that she's married now <laughs> but anyway i'm so so happy for her um and yeah i just wanted to be present for that special occasion so i i tried to be on social media as much as i can but i kind of you know shut myself down for a couple of days so i haven't really been caught up on all of the comings and goings and um i don't know that might be to my benefit when get famous comes out because you know um i will do a let's play on it and i will be recording my first impression on everything so it's gonna be like genuinely surprise <laughs> reactions if you guys get what i mean but anyway back to this build um we're actually building um a very historic um house <laughs> obviously by the looks of it this house has a very long history um the church itself actually has a history that dates back to the medieval period when it was first founded as an abbey and the very first church was constructed on site um, unfortunately that first church was a casualty of the reformation in an event called the dissolution of the monasteries so unfortunately um, the church and all of its treasures were um, looted and destroyed and all that remains of that first church are some ruined foundations that are in the present church property um, but yeah the current structure of the church dates back to the victorian period um, a period where um, architectural revivals were on vogue um, so in this case we are building a romanesque revival structure um but yeah it has been a church for you know hundreds of years however sometime during the mid 20th century the church got deconsecrated because of declining 
um, attendance from its parishioners, and it eventually got, um, you know, deconsecrated. And basically, it's been left like that for decades, and it has pretty much fallen into disrepair, which pretty much forced the parish to put it up for sale, otherwise it would have been crumbling into ruins. Um, so yeah, fast forward to present day where an artist decides to buy the church. Um, so yeah, the parish decides to put it up for sale under the condition that the structure of the church itself will be kept intact and the um, churchyard, which is actually a graveyard, um, be kept open for visiting relatives, family members of the deceased. Um, so this condition is actually what spurred on the current owner to open up um, the church itself into sort of like a community center for the arts so um some parts of this house are actually accessible to the visiting public so that they can see like all the different um you know like collections that the owner has on display and also access some of like the books that you know the owner has collected throughout the years um so yeah i know that that's a very <laughs> very long backstory but I actually enjoyed thinking about this. I had a lot of time uh, to work on this build and work on that backstory. This build has been in the works for exactly one week um, but yeah um, obviously given the fact that this place has a very very long history there are rumors that you know there have been some supernatural occurrences and some ghostly sightings happening about so if you guys move your sims here just keep that in mind you might be surprised by whatever goes bump in the night <laughs> so that's kind of like my tie-in to the whole halloween season i didn't really want to do kind of like a cartoony halloween themed build because i feel like that's what everyone already does um but yeah um the church itself is a relatively complicated structure obviously you guys probably saw the entire construction of it um it's pretty standard i think for a church of this style which you know has a central nave with beautiful beautiful architecture and vaulted ceilings honestly Doing this build came so naturally to me because as a teenager, I had this weird obsession with church architecture. <laughs> That's probably the beginnings of my passion for heritage conservation, but as a teenager, I used to love to study um, and design my own churches and palaces and stuff like that. So doing this wasn't really that, that difficult for me. Um, I, I really really enjoyed the outside, um, especially like the shape of the church itself. Like I love the super high bell tower and like all of the little details just I, I'm, I'm really really proud of the work that I did on the design of the church itself. Um, also, I should have probably mentioned this earlier but this build does use quite a bit of custom content. I'm using a colonial window set I got from Mod The Sims as well as one item from I think it was the construction set by a blogger. Um, yeah, I used an awning into a vault for the ceiling. Um, it's not really that necessary, um, it's not required. As per usual, every time I do custom content builds, I will upload a custom content free version on the gallery, which typically gets more downloads than the CC version. Um, but yeah, all of the links for the CC will be available in the description below. So check that out first before asking me questions in the comments. Um, but now that we're working on the interior, I should probably talk Talk about it a little bit more. Um, so for the interior, I actually went for something that was very, very minimal. I will say minimal eclectic because I think part of the charm of this building is the fact that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of artifacts that actually are from the original church, such as the pipe organ that I just placed. 
Um, I almost never get to use that item, but I think that there is a pipe organ skill actually. So I don't know, that would be a really interesting skill to try to learn. Um, also, there's this beautiful fairy statue that I imagine also dates back to, you know, centuries before um, the present day so that mixed in with some contemporary pieces of artwork and some pop art with some really really bright flashy colors i think um really give this place that unique character i really really love all the contemporary artworks mixed in with some of these like antique pieces um, anyway, this area of the church or of the house is actually the one that's accessible for the public. So there's, you know, some books over here that are available for people who want to do research or like archival, you know, um, historical research and stuff like that. Also, there's a lot of like sculptures and paintings on display for people to admire and to appreciate. I love this sculpture right here on the main entrance. I think that it's very dramatic, but I think it it gives off a really good contrast to, you know, the classical interiors that we have. Um, I love the kitchen with the black chandeliers and the ceiling piece um, using an item that came with spa day as a ceiling. Um, and I also really love the dining room that has the double high windows and that um, pipe organ. Oh my gosh, that's just so beautiful. But I think my favorite room in the entire house would probably be this living room slash game room area. Um, I love how just by simply putting this flat screen TV, well, is it, is it a flat screen? Let's call it a flat screen TV. Just by simply putting that flat screen TV lower, almost on the ground level, just gives this whole place a lot more dimension. Uh, I, I really like how this place looks. Um, I think this actually is really close to what my personal style would be, you know, very minimalist, um, maybe hints of some classicism and a lot of pop art. I love bright colors um, and pop art, contemporary pop art. Um, you guys will see me actually put in this chess piece over here, but it's in red. So, you know, it's like screaming at you um, for attention. And I think that balances out the whole simplicity of, you know, all, all the white furniture. Um, there's also like this gaming table I put right here um, that has like primary color chairs, which I also really liked. Um, this weekend, actually, a couple of my friends flew over from different parts of the country, um, and they stayed over at my apartment. Literally, I, I have been so, so freaking busy. Um, but yeah, doing that, like, thing reminded me of my friends hanging out at my place and just playing card games and stuff like that. Oh, by the way, you guys probably just saw me put in kind of like a cloud chandelier, over the dining room area. If you haven't, rewind it just a little bit. I just placed it there. That cloud thing was kind of like supposed to be a reference to, you, you know how in like church painted ceilings, they would have like these clouds like in the Sistine Chapel or something. It would depict like the sky. That's kind of like my contemporary reference to that. Uh, but yeah, right now we're actually working on the master bedroom slash only bedroom in this house. So it, this place actually has a lot of activities for the Sims. Like it has a walk-in closet, of course a bed. It also has the main office area where, you know, our um, owner kind of like runs her business. You know what, now that I mentioned that, I don't think I've really talked a lot about the owner of this house, but I imagine the owner to be kind of like a conservationist slash fine art antique restorer, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, somebody who restores um, priceless antiques for a living, which is why I actually decided to make a workshop instead of you know, extra bedrooms in another wing of the house. But you know, if you guys want to expand, you guys can just 
renovate it. There's a lot of space in the workshop area. I don't know why I'm talking about that while we're working on this master bedroom, but I love this bedroom actually. It has this fuchsia pink rug and this piano um, rug right next to this floor mirror right here. I love this. And then this area right here has kind of like some pendant lights. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, really love how this interior came together. It, show, it shows so much personality um, and I'm really, really happy with it. But yes, I, I'm so, so happy with how this room came together in the end. My only wish is that I, I wish I could have put more bedrooms, but you know, given the whole state of this house itself, I think everything is okay. You know, I think everything is in the right place, if you guys get what I mean. Um, so yeah, there's also an easel in the main bedroom as well. I don't know, um, it's a good thing to have. Um, I had nowhere else to put it, so might as well put it over here in the master bedroom so that, you know, whenever she feels like it or he feels like it, um, our owner can just grab a brush and start painting on canvas. Uh, but yeah, as always, all of my builds, <laughs> um, all of my recent builds have this L-shaped study area. Oh, I love those palm trees. They just look so fresh and summery um, and they look so good with just plain white walls. A lot of people underestimate the beauty of just plain white walls and I'm just like, I live for white walls, especially with the lighting that we have in The Sims 4. I think that um, it's 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 amazing. It looks amazing um, seeing the light come through the windows, reflected onto the like a plain white wall. <laughs> the inner architect in me is just <sighs> I don't even know how to describe it. Moving on, <laughs> this is the only bathroom in the entire house. Once again, it has this kind of like pop art pieces of artwork. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's very classical meets contemporary. And my favorite thing is this frog spouting water onto this bathtub because why not? That would be perfect for that, right? Um, and I'm just using in some red, bright red details to bring some pops of color uh, to these rooms. And right now we're actually working on the um, workshop area. Uh, so we're kind of just putting in a delivery dock at first because I wanted this to have more of like an industrial feel. So I wanted to put like these delivery docks um, and you know maybe if they have like some shipments of larger pieces of artwork you know they could pass by that area or something like that, whatever. Um, and yeah, of course, we have some really, really large um, workspaces. I also wanted to make this place functional as well. So I put in some, like I put in a work table. Is it a work table it, or a workbench? Um, wood crafting table? I don't even know. But yeah, it's one of those. And an archaeology station table thing as well. Just, you know. Um, to make this room a little bit more functional. Um, I do imagine this to be um, kind of like a small office. So, you know, um, our conservationist slash owner is kind of like the main manager and then working with her or him are some, you know, fellow conservationists and stuff like that. And I'm just putting in some pieces of artwork. Um, some of them might look out of place. Uh, but yeah, these artworks are meant to be um, whatever it is that they're trying to conservationize, no, conserve. Uh, so there's this beautiful painting of a lady and this thinker statue, um, which I feel like is a standard piece of statue to have for every artist's workshop, especially for a sculptor. Anyway, I also put in some blueprints and some, you know, decorative vases over here on this shelf. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. I, I really, really like how this room came together. It's a little bit industrial, uh, but that was my intention uh, because I wanted it to feel like 
a place where people actually worked on restoring really important pieces of artworks. And oh my gosh, I just discovered this beautiful ballerina sculpture. I've never seen that before. I think it came with base game actually, but the moment I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. So I forced myself to incorporate that. So I deleted another sculpture from like the hallway area in front and then I replaced it with that ballerina sculpture. Also I put kind of like a truck uh, or like a van um, which this company uses to deliver some artworks that they've restored and stuff so yeah I put it out back. Um, I thought that was a really nice you know a uh, little touch. And now we are pretty much done working on the interior and moving on to working on the outside landscaping. I had so much fun working on the landscaping actually. Um, overall, I went for more of like a naturalistic kind of vibe. Um, I wanted this to actually look like, um, you know, a realistic um like church slash cemetery i guess oh this is just me um putting back these awning pieces um which are custom content but i wanted to have like some beautiful vaulted ceilings um those are groin vaults by the way uh, just some technical information for those who are interested also earlier i mentioned that, that this church was romanesque when people see this probably for the first time, they'll think, oh, that's a gothic church. Um, there's a lot of confusion on the difference between gothic and romanesque architecture, but romanesque architecture came before gothic. And one very easy way to differentiate those two architectural styles is actually just remember that romanesque uses semicircular archways um, while gothic uses um, pointed arches uh, so that's a pretty easy way to remember and differentiate and distinguish those two styles because uh, admittedly they do look really similar um also you guys probably just saw me put in those ruins that i was talking about earlier um they are kind of like in front of the building they're not really that spectacular but you can kind of get an idea of you know how antique and how ancient this place feels like Interestingly enough, this area in Windenburg, across the street from this place, are like these rune stones, um, which are so interesting. Like I, I did imagine this house, to, uh, I mean this church, to be somewhere in the United Kingdom. I don't think rune stones actually exist in the UK, but it just it feels really like Stonehenge. You guys got what I mean? Anyway. Um, that's also kind of like my inspiration for the landscaping like I really wanted the landscaping to Be very naturalistic and be very reminiscent of those like, you know church garden landscapings <laughs> um, I don't know. I would always see like in Downton Abbey for example like pretty much in every period drama I watch that has like this scene in the graveyard I was kind of just channeling that vibe uh, so yeah, I'm just putting in these tombstones. It took me quite a while to put them, but I wanted them to look really natural and organic. Um, and they look so good. Um, I know it's a little bit weird to live in a house that is also a cemetery, uh, but people actually do that in real life. Like a lot of this church was inspired by um, <laughs> a TV show that I watched ages ago called Restoration Home where they did kind of like this um, conversion of a church um, very very similar to this one actually um, a lot of the backstory for this church was actually taken or inspired by that episode of Restoration Home uh, so yeah um, and yep I'm just keeping it really simple on um, the landscaping so I'm just putting in some flowers to make it look overgrown and some grass um and yeah i think that is actually pretty much it for this build hopefully you guys enjoyed it and if you did please feel free to help support the channel by sharing the video leaving a like and a comment and also subscribe if you haven't yet because that also is very much appreciated as well so thank you guys so so much for watching you all have an awesome 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 day enjoy the rest of the video and i'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>